this posted by the World Post. Hundreds killed in stampede outside of Mecca. And then, of course, you've got hundreds injured as well. And the last time we checked, this number was about 700 plus people. They've got a video here by Russia Today or Russia Television. And this is a partnership of the Huffington Post. And we understand the Huffington Post to be a publication, a news agency that support Islam as, as I would say, a respectable belief system and religion. We've got to ask, when these situations occur, are they proof that the God of Islam is not the real God and that people who are Muslim should turn away and totally reject Islam because Islam has, as a belief system and religious philosophy, provided 0% of anything for the Muslim. It has done absolutely nothing for the Muslim. There has been no spiritual benefit for the Muslim. Let's read a little bit of this article here. Or for the rest of the world, for that matter. Mina, Saudi Arabia, September 24th, Reuters. So this reported by Reuters news, news agency. At least 717 pilgrims were killed on Thursday in a crush outside the Muslim holy. That means it's dedicated to God and pure. Outside of the Muslim holy city of Mecca. The Saudi authorities said the worst disaster to strike the annual Hajj pilgrimage in 25 years. At least 863 others were injured at Mina. That's almost 2,000 people a few kilometers east of Mecca, where two large groups of pilgrims arrived to together at a crossroads on their way to performing the stoning of the devil, a ritual at Jamrat, Saudi, uh, Jamrat, Saudi civil defense said Thursday's disaster was the worst to occur at the pilgrimage since July 1990 when 1,426 pilgrims were crushed to death in a tunnel near Mecca. Now, think of, my, think of this. One of my brothers made a statement today about how they're supposed to be expressing their hatred for the devil, but yet out of fear will step on each other to death. They will trample each other to death, but yet they're supposed to be making this solemn pilgrimage to Mecca to show that they don't like the devil, they don't like evil. But yet when they're afraid of evil, they are willing to kill their fellow Muslim to escape it. What does that prove? It proves that Allah does not give the follower of Muhammad's teachings, any peace of heart or mind. These are devoted people. Some people could look at America and say, well, there are all kinds of tragedies in America. There are. And if you, and what you will not see is people who love the Lord Jesus Christ, serving him with all of their heart, just dying en masse. Do, do church buses Flip where people die, that happens. Back from some church conference, man, that happens sometimes. It's quite rare, but it does happen. And in that situation, you say, well, what about that? We understand that people die for different reasons. One of the reasons why people die, if the Lord decides that this group of people are going to die today because he's going to take them from the earth, and he allows an accident, a car accident, to be the basis by which they do that, then we can understand and say, okay, well, even though we may not understand why that was the way that they died, we know that they were faithful people to the Lord, and we believe that they're going to spend eternity with God. So when you talk about accidents and things like that, then you can reason that, well... God decided to take these people from the earth. Their bodies are here, but their spirits are with him. But what happens when devout religious people kill each other? 
because we do understand that that's exactly what happened here. We do understand that this is a consistent problem with Islam, that the Muslims kill other Muslims. Now, in this pilgrimage, you're not talking about Saudi or, or, or Shia versus Sunni versus whoever other group of Muslim. You're talking about, from our understanding, just general Muslims, maybe some whom, whom were Saudi or whom were, or whom were Sunni or Shia. They were committed to saving their own lives, even to the point of crushing to death their fellow Muslims. Other images showed bodies of men in white hajj garments piled on top of each other. Some corpses bore visible injuries. Unverified video posted on Twitter showed pilgrims and rescue workers trying to revive some victims. The hajj is the world's largest annual gathering of people. Has been the scene of numerous deadly stampedes, fires, and riots. So what is Allah doing for the Muslim or anybody else in the world. If you are Muslim, you have to ask yourself, what does Allah do for me? Because the God of the Bible promises many, many things that he fulfills in a variety of ways. And the Bible is an example of many testimonies of what God does for his people. You have to ask, is the Quran a testimony? If I don't suggest anybody read the Quran, but you do realize the Quran has absolutely no testimonies of what Allah did for anyone. You realize that the Hadiths have no testimonies that parallel the Muslim of today, meaning a Muslim can't look at any victories that Allah worked in the life of the Muslims back then who were alive during the writings of the Hadiths. A Muslim can't rely on the Hadiths or the Quran for any comfort in his present life. I'm not saying in reference to D did Allah provide the Ottoman Empire or whoever else to kill other nations? Obviously, we could all look at passages of religious books or secular books. Uh, I mean, Hitler could attribute his conquest at, until, up to his death to some spirit. Obviously, we could say, oh, yeah, the one, my spirit helped me beat up your spirit. So when I say that the Muslim can't look into the Quran for... Victory. I'm not saying that he can't get inspiration from Muhammad's words as the basis for why he should conquer the world. What I am saying is there is absolutely no zero evidence for anything Allah does. No one had a barren womb and sought Allah and then Allah blessed the wife to bear, to give birth like it does consistent like it shows us consistently in the bible nobody had a, a dead cousin whom allah helped to raise from the dead no one had any kind of emotional trauma where allah brought peace or depression where allah brought there's absolutely no benefit of serving allah even to the point where people are supposedly stoning the devil and in actuality, they rather kill each other. So they stone the supposed devil in some false ritual that they associate with Abraham. And there's absolutely no evidence of Abraham doing this in the Holy Bible. And we know that Muhammad was knowledgeable about the Old Covenant and New Covenant. So anything that he spoke about concerning the old prophets, he got from Jews and Christians, not from himself, not from his own revelation. So Muhammad has no benefit for the Muslim whatsoever. This is what the God of Islam brings to the Muslim. Death and destruction. If their hearts were different, then they would not kill each other. If their hearts were different, they would not trample each other to death. That is what religion, true religion, is designed to do. There, there is only one true religion. 
and that is faith in Jesus Christ. He is the only one who promises you peace of mind, who promises you protection, who promises you love, who promises you comfort, who promises you care, who promises you eternal life. I saw a video a couple of weeks ago where you had this Muslim man, older Muslim man who was about maybe in his late 50s, telling Muslim children that the only way to guarantee a spot in paradise is to be a martyr, to go and kill themselves for the sake of Allah. But yet, he didn't go and kill himself, and he's in his 50s or 60s. Why is he telling these adolescents that they should be inspired to kill themselves for Allah so that they could have virgins when he didn't kill himself for Allah? Why are any of the sheikhs or imams old? If I should go and kill myself, sir, you should kill yourself first. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't say kill for me. Jesus said, I will die for you. And others may kill you for my name. But don't worry, you're, you have me as an example. Jesus died and came back. To show the people that dying for the sake of righteousness will grant eternal life. Jesus died and rose again on the third day and went into heaven. And that is why the disciples were willing to die for him because they saw him, had him as an example of what the resurrection of the dead could do. Where you could die for someone and rise again. Jesus died for people and rose again. Does Islam, Hinduism, or Buddhism, or do any of them have any examples of the Savior or of the great prophet dying for them and then coming back? They absolutely do not. So if you are Muslim and you are hearing this, the Spirit of God wants you to know that Jesus died for you. Muhammad did not. And Jesus came back to life and showed people the way. Muhammad did not. Allah has no messenger who can exhibit that kind of love. Jesus loves you and he wants you to depart from the belief system of Islam because it is absolute deception and you can check your Quran and Hadiths and you will not find a single prophecy that has been fulfilled, not short-term prophecies or long-term prophecies, not a single prophecy prophecy in Islam has been fulfilled and the one belief system that the one prophecy that they have of this coming savior this coming Mahdi they got that from Revelation it specifies that there would be coming a person to set, to start some seven year peace treaty and the Muslims believe that to be their last prophet their, the Mahdi and but yet the Bible describes that same individual as the Antichrist so there you go so please understand the Spirit of God is calling everyone to absolutely reject the teachings of Muhammad, the beliefs of Islam. They are all false to the degree that anybody who commits to them only has death. That's all they have to look forward to is death. They are willing to kill each other to save their own lives. That's why there's this Syrian crisis people say oh well the west is involved if these are devout muslims then why are they willing to kill each other in a civil war even if the united states did pay money even if there is a conspiracy to take control over syria uh, even if that's true if a person is devout in their belief of god they're not going to let somebody pay them to overthrow their m islamic government if Assad is Muslim and the rebels are Muslim and they're killing each other, even if they're being paid to do so, why are they accepting the money? It's because Islam is a deception and the Spirit of God wants his creatures to depart from that belief so he can love and save you. He made you in his image and in his likeness to bless you and to prosper you, not so that we are murderers at heart.
This is David Williams with Jesus Ministries. Please turn from all beliefs that contradict the words of Jesus Christ.